Hello, this is Tom with Plan For Your Tomorrow. This is a quick walkthrough of our Morningstar client portal, which we are preparing to launch. For starters, I'll assume that you've been to our website. If you haven't been to our website, this is what it looks like. This is the home page, and it can be reached at www.planforyourtomorrow.com. From most of our web pages, you can access the Morningstar client portal, which gives you a look at your client accounts, both in aggregate and individually. So to access the portal from most of our web pages, you can simply scroll down to the bottom and look for this collection of icons that takes you to different places uh, around the web. And the one that you're going to want to look at is the Morningstar icon, which when you hover over it says Client Account Portal for Morningstar and click on that and it will take you to another one of our web pages which will have a login. Here you would enter in the credentials that we've provided to you. I'm going to use my dog Stretch's sample credentials and uh, we'll take a look at his accounts. So when we log into the portal, the first thing you'll notice is that there are three tabs that divide the portal up into three major sections. The Documents tab we can largely ignore because we're not using it at this stage so it will always be blank until you hear otherwise. The two sections that remain are Overview and Account Details. The Overview tab is the one page where you can look at the aggregated information on all of your accounts. So as long as we have the account in our record keeping system, it can show up here. So in this case, we see that it's broken into a couple of modules. And to navigate down, what you'll do to look at the rest of the modules is just scroll your browser by using your scroll bar on the right. You'll notice that there's a scroll bar in the middle of this, which doesn't do much. We've sized this so that the entire page of the Morningstar portal shows up on our web page. So that's, that scroll bar isn't necessary. When you go to look at this portal, you will see a couple of uh, major sections that are of interest that will repeat themselves in various ways. On the Overview tab, you'll see the top 15 holdings. In this case, Stretch only has 9. If he had 30 holdings, though, this would say top 15 out of 30. Uh, in this case, because he only has 9, there are only 9 holdings represented. It lists the name and ticker symbol of the holding, its market value as of the date listed above. Typically, this will be the previous day's close of business and it will show the percentage of the overall assets that this holding represents. Beside that, you will see the list of accounts that are being watched. And in this case, you'll see that Stretch has two separate test accounts. The first is a Roth IRA with about 143 grand, which isn't too bad for a dog. And the second is a test brokerage account, just a regular non-qualified cash brokerage account with about 41,000 in it. So all of the information that we're seeing here is the aggregate of the holdings in these two accounts. When we look at the second section below that, we'll see the asset allocation of the aggregate, which shows the distribution between cash, US and non-US stocks, bonds, other, in this case, commodities, and assets that are not classified in the Morningstar database. The total of all of the investment accounts is 184,000 and change and it's broken up by these assets. To the right of that, you'll see the composition of all of the assets in Stretch's net worth. This includes investment and, in this case, non-investment accounts. He has $41,000 in that taxable brokerage account, which is uh, the one that I was pointing out right here, and that represents about 20% of his assets. He has $143,000 in, in in a Roth IRA, which represents about 70 and change percent of his assets, and then a few non-investment accounts that we're tracking for him. So we'll see a little bit more about those in a moment. When we roll down and look at his net worth summary, we can see those non-investment account assets showing up under other assets. In this case, I said that he had a Toyota 4Runner worth about $16,000 as a personal use asset and a doghouse worth about 250 bucks. So you can see that those are being reported here just based on the dollar value that he would have provided. 
And beside that, you can see his portfolio assets of 184, uh, excuse me, $184,000, which jives with the figure that we saw above. We also gave Stretch a liability. Uh, we proposed that he had a $34,000 personal loan outstanding that he talked the folks over at Veterinary Pet Insurance into giving him. And we actually used that to calculate on an ongoing basis his net worth. So we take the total assets of $200,000, which is the sum of his portfolio assets and other assets, deduct his liabilities and generate a quick net worth. We have other more detailed net worth tools, but this is just a quick snapshot that in his case, we'll say he wanted us to use. Beside that, we can see the various regions of the world where Stretch has invested. And as you can see here, he has invested mostly in North America. When we hover on that, we see that he's got 91% of his assets in North America and uh, not that much in the rest of the world. Some of these will be repeated when we look at the detailed account information on the individual accounts. So looking at the account details, we'll see some of the same displays and other things that show a little bit more granular detail. First thing that we do is select the account we want to look at, which in this case is done right in this little drop down box. And we're going to look at his stretch IRA, uh, sorry, his Roth IRA. And when we do that, you'll see that each of his positions in the account are listed here along with information about them that you can look at by sliding this bar left and right. Below that, we see the asset allocation again, except this time it is only for this account. So we see the breakdown of this account's $143,000 net worth divided up between the same categories. Beside it, we see a mountain chart that shows this account's growth over time, uh, in this case. And in his case, this is, a, this is dummy data, so we just went back and uh, collected 10 years worth of history. In the case that we're actually monitoring real account activity, this would begin at the inception of the accounts tracking and, and stretch out going forward. Again, all data is as of the date listed here. Below that, any transactions that we would have in his accounts would show up here over the, I, I believe this shows about the trailing three months. And then beside it, again, this account's particular investment breakdown. And we see that he's got 91% of the assets in this account in North America and some in developed Europe and not much else. A couple of other things that are worth drawing your attention to. At the bottom, there are disclosures that you should take some time and look at. And if you want more information, each one of these links will take you somewhere to give you more information on the topic in question. If you wanted background information on Morningstar, for example, you can click here and it will launch the Morningstar corporate page where you can find out a little bit about Morningstar and find out why we chose them or get a little bit of information relative to why we chose them to provide account data for our clients. If you were to go up to the top, you'll see that there is a, an icon up here next to uh, my name. And if you hover on that icon, you will see that it gives contact information for me. So if you have questions when you're in the portal, you can reach me by dialing my phone number as listed here or click on my email address and it will send me an email. Uh, or launch your local email program to send me an email. Uh, and you can ask me any questions that might occur to you. The last thing that I'll point out as a matter of good practice is the logout button up on the upper right. When Stretch is done looking at his accounts in the portal, I always recommend that you log out. And I'm going to recommend that he do so. So when someone else comes drifting by the computer, they won't be able to pick up where he left off and get any proprietary investment information. So once you've logged out of the portal, you'll see you're back at the login page and you can resume browsing simply by clicking on any one of the other menu items. So thank you very much. We hope you find the portal useful and we hope you enjoy our website. If you have any questions, please feel free to call me at 614-300 two two six three 
or email me at tom at planforyourtomorrow.com.